Two years later, I'm still wondering when GTA 6 is coming out and thought I should do another upgrade on my cooling setup. This time, fixing it to my computer and doing some benchmarks and temperature comparisons. The last fan was powerful, but this time I'm thinking bigger. Much bigger. I bought this 1400 watt electric jet engine, otherwise known as an electric ducted fan or EDF, which has a maximum static thrust of 2.3 kilograms. For comparison, my entire system pulls at peak around 400 watts, meaning this case fan is 3.5 times as powerful as my whole system and 100th as powerful as me. I began by taking measurements of the fan and modelling it in CAD. Before I could start this modelling, however, I first had to go online and take someone's case fan 3D model. After an hour or so of CAD, we had our 3D printable electric jet engine PC case fan attachment, which I got on the 3D printer and first try it fits perfectly. I then pressed the EDF into the 3D printed housing and fastened it with some M3 bolts. This next part I was the most nervous about. There was an almost unlimited number of things that can go wrong with strapping a 1.8 horsepower electric jet engine to my computer. More specifically, my only computer, and one I'd rather get back without shards of molten propeller embedded in the graphics card. Anyway, after stripping it down further, I realised that my hard drive would be sitting right behind the blades of the fan. This is bad for two reasons. The first is that obviously if it explodes, it might send bits of propeller back and destroy my hard drive. I'm sure this is a bit of a danger, but I assumed it would send the shrapnel forwards, not back, which is fine because that's where I'll be standing. Either way, I'm more worried about the enormous vibrations of a poorly mounted EDF causing damage to the hard drive than anything else. It was also at this moment I came to the realisation that the connectors for the fan were small and the connectors on the electric speed controller, or ESC, I'm stealing from my RC bay were much larger. Anyway, the different size bullet connectors was an easy fix. I also realised that unfortunately, the connector on my battery was too small for the massive XC90 on the boat ESC, so I went and did a bit more soldering. With that, I think we're ready for the first test. Now that all the setup is done, it's time for the first power on test. I'll plug in the ESC, receiver and battery, and prepare for something to go horribly wrong. Surprisingly, nothing went wrong and we got about 200 watts as you can see on the meter. The only thing that concerned me however, was that this was only about 15% of the maximum power, and I know that a lot can break in that next 85%. I thought now was a good time to begin benchmarking before something broke and I didn't get any data. I first ran Cinebench, 3D Mark and User Benchmark with my standard cooling system. Whilst doing so, I also used Open Hardware Monitor to log all the temperature data from my computer against time at 1 second intervals. This data I was most interested in, as without overclocking, performance wouldn't be affected that much, whereas temperature would be. After running all the benchmarks on stock and locking temperatures, it was time to begin the test with the EDF. I decided to run all of the benchmarks with a jet engine fan of varying power outputs. First at 200 watts, then 300 watts, etc., incrementing by 100 watts until the EDF couldn't go faster, or I was on the floor bleeding out from numerous chest wounds. I was actually quite surprised by how the fan performed after looking at the graphs. For example, here, there is a clear 10 degree difference. This surprised me because, well, blowing room temperature air into the case, not even directly onto the CPU cooler, really isn't an efficient way of cooling at all. Thanks for watching this video about calling a PC with a jet engine, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe, it would be very much appreciated.